of a process layout, then your locations within your facility are going to be laid out so that your materials, your work in process, can go to different locations depending on what needs to be done. So think about a hospital emergency room. They decide based on what you need, an x-ray or maybe you need stitches, they'll send you to different locations. This means that there's lots of work in process that's being moved around. So we have what is called a variable path. So you might move from this department to this department to that one, whereas someone else might take a different path. So we have variable path. This is especially beneficial if you have services or if you have variation in the different products that you're producing. Whereas the product layout is used when you have a standard production and you want everything is essentially being produced the same way. So we're doing it, we're moving the materials in order um, to each workstation based on how uh, the steps in the production process. Well, when you have the process layout, uh, we need to figure out where we're going to put these different departments. And so the first method we're going to look at is minimizing total transportation cost or distance. This is also called block diagramming. In this case, what we're doing is we are looking at the workflow that goes between different departments and locations. So let's look at an example. Let's suppose that you have a building. And in your building, you essentially have three departments. Okay. And so the question is, what do you put into location A, B, and C? And in this example, let's suppose that we have departments 1, 2, and 3. And so we need to figure out where they're going to be located. We're going to look at how far apart they are and we're going to look at the flow of material. So how much is moving between them? This can be a flow of information, of people, or of uh, inventory, partially created product. So let's look at the example of what if we put department one into location A, department two into location B, and department three into location C. We would then need to look at the relationship between department one and two, two and three, and one and three. And so we want to look at the distance between them, and we want to look at the workflow between them. Okay. So let's start by looking at the distance. Well, one and two are in locations A and B. So from location A to location B, it's 20 meters apart. Or from B to A, again, 20 meters apart. So our distance here of 20 meters. Between two and three, that's location B and C. Location B and location C, so B and C, are 30 meters apart. Locations a and C, that's where department one and three are located, so let's go A and C, are 40 meters apart. So now we want to look at how much workflow goes between them. So departments one and two, so from one to two, we have 10 units that are moving. From department two to department one, we have 20 units that are moving. So we have to recognize that there's workflow in both directions. So it is that 10 plus 20 that gives us a workflow of 30 for departments one and two. For departments two and three, we can see that the workflow from two to three is 30, from three to two is 70. So we have 30 plus 70, and so there's a total of 100 units of workflow. Now between departments 1 and 3, so department 1 to department 3 is 90, and from 3 to 1 is 80. So 90 plus 80, we have 170 units. 
So if we look at the total, what we call load meter, so this is meters of distance, and then our workflow is in units of load. And so we would take then 20 times 30, and we would get 600. We would take 30 times 100, and we have 300. 40 times 170, we get 6,800. And if we add the 600 plus the 300 plus the 6,800, then the total in terms of load meters is 10,400. If we have a cost, if the cost is $2 per load meter, so think about it, every time uh, you are moving partially created inventory between locations, that is costing you money. Every time you have workers, so let's say you have an accounting firm, and if they're constantly walking back and forth uh, between areas, that's costing you money, right? Time they could be working on other things that has a value. So if we have $2 per load meter, then 10400 in terms of load meters times the two dollars means the total cost here is twenty thousand eight hundred. Okay. So is this a good way to lay out our facility? Well notice that the two departments that are furthest apart, departments one and three, have the most workflow. This is costing us money it would make more sense for the departments that have the most flow between them to be the closest together. We notice here that the two that are closest together have the least amount of workflow. So we need to come up with a new approach, something that would be cheaper than $20,800. So let's look again here. Here's our building divided into three locations. A, B, and C, and we need to figure out where to put departments 1, 3, and 2. Well, we saw before that 1 and 3 had the most workflow. So it makes sense for them to be the shortest distance. So let's put 1 and 3 where A and B were. Notice that the least amount of workflow was 1 and 2, so we want them to be furthest apart. So what if we laid this out here, one, three, two, one and three, which have the most workflow, are now in the A and B position, and three and two, okay, are going to be in the B and C position. And notice that 1 and 2 are in the A and C position. And if we look back, 1 and 2 had the least amount of workflow. So let's double check that this is more cost effective. So again, we have 1 and 2, 2 and 3, 1 and 3 in terms of relationships we need to work look at. We need to look at the distance they are. And we need to look at workflow. Well, we don't actually have to recalculate workflow because workflow is based on the departments, not on their locations. So the workflow between 1 and 3 is still 170. The workflow between 2 and 3 is still 100, and between 1 and 2, it's 30. So we can just copy those down. The distances are what have changed. So now we see that 1 is in the A spot and 2 is in the C spot. So let's go look at the distance between A and C. The distance from A to C is 40. 2 and 3 are in the B and the C spot. So let's go look at B and C. And those B and C are 30. And we look at 1 and 3. 1 and 3 are in the A and B slot. 
which has a distance of 20. So we should see the, the smallest distance with the most workflow, the longest distance with the least workflow. So this is a change from the one we looked at before. Now we need to find our load meters. And so let's take 40 times 30 and we get 120. 30 times 100 gives us 3,000. And 20 times 170 gives us 3,400. When we add these three together, we get 7,600. Do we get 7,600? We get 6,400. 6,560. All right, let's take that one more time. 3,000, 3,400, and sorry, 1,200 is 40 times 30. So if we add those together, then we get 7,600. The total cost, if it's still $2 per load meter, is now 7,600 times 2, which is 15,200. So we can see by changing the locations of our different departments, we've gone from costing our business 20 thousand eight hundred bucks for all the movement of people and materials and now the cost is fifteen thousand two hundred dollars so we can use the block diagramming or the minimizing total transportation cost method to allocate departments to locations within our facility when we have a process layout